Adobe Firefly text to video model is finally here for the public. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for this, but the wait is over and I've put a link below where you can access it. So how good is it? Let's test it out and jump on in. So a couple weeks back, I went to the Adobe Gen I Summit in San Francisco and there were about 30, 35 of us there and we all learned about the new tools in AI that Adobe is developing and we're able to give feedback. So I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I would like to see in these tools and how they might be useful to us and how they are not useful, of course, throughout this video. But for now, let's show you some of the things that are new and how it works. When you go to firefly.adobe.com, you can see that there are many different ways to create and I'm on the video tab right now and you can see that there's text to video, there's image to video, which is basically the same thing, but you start from a reference image. There's now translate video where you can upload and translate into different languages. There's also these two things that are coming soon, enhanced speech, which you've seen with Adobe Podcast and inside of Premiere Pro. And then there's text to avatar, which basically lets you give a script and some generic avatar speaks it. So also if you go to the audio tab and scroll down, there's two more things that are coming soon. Text to sound effects. Now this was previewed in Project Supersonic at Adobe Max, where basically you can type in a description of sound and it will generate that sound effect for you. Let me show you an example. Let's have a listen. And my personal favorite voice to sound effects, you can basically do a rough sound fully just using your mouth and then it can transform it into the actual sound. So these are not available yet, but I'm super excited about them. Let's start with the text to video tool here. Let's just click on text to video beta. And you can see here on the left underneath general settings, the model is the Firefly video beta. There's no other models available yet. Aspect ratio, you now have portrait as well. So if you edit vertical video, you have this. And then beneath that frames per second. Right now there's only 24 frames per second, but I know that they're gonna develop more over time. And then here's where they give you some more camera controls. So here they now have shot size. So you can choose whether you want it to be an extreme close up all the way down to an extreme long shot. And then camera angle. Is it an aerial shot, eye level, high angle shot, low angle, or top down? That's really cool. And then you have motion. Do you want it to zoom in? Do you want it to move to the left, tilt up, just be static and handheld? And then there's seed, which is basically a random seed that AI generates that produces a different result. And then down here in the center is where you can upload a first frame and an end frame as a reference, which we'll get to. And then you can just describe the prompt that you want. Let's actually not start with the frames first. And I just wanna show you what you can generate without having any reference image at all. For example, let's say monkey scratches his head and then peels a banana and eats it. I want it to be in the widescreen the shot size, let's have it be a long shot, let's have it be an eye level, and let's have it zoom in, and let's hit generate. And by the way, for right now, each generation is only five seconds and restricted to 1080p for now. The generation takes about 60 seconds or so, sometimes a little bit longer. All right, so here's the first result. And as you can see, it's the banana changes form. It does zoom in over the wide shot, which followed the instructions, but the banana is just doing some weird things here and kind of disappears. This time let's try a medium shot. Let's do move right and let's change the prompt slightly. Monkey runs into frame from the left, holding a banana. He then scratches his head and then eats the banana. And then let's try a different seed and generate. So a lot of these generations are hit or miss. And so you may be better off if you're just looking for a singular B-roll shot, finding that stock video clip, 
honest dog video site. But if you want to have a little bit more control, you can play around with these generations. But one of the things that was some of our major feedback, especially when we went to the AI Summit, was that we need more control, right? We need to be able to set different actions. Like for example, if you want the monkey to run into the frame, but then you want the camera to pan down and zoom in, and then you can have another action. So you can kind of build these story keyframes. Right now, you can try to type that story out, but the results are a little bit hard to control, especially with the camera movement. All right, let's see how it did. All right. Again, it's eating it really weird. It didn't scratch its head, but it did move in on the left of frame and it followed my camera movement of moving right. So it did something there, right? Maybe you wanna have it in a particular style. For example, you can maybe find a shot on a stock video site of a monkey eating a banana, but do you have it in a claymation style or an anime style? You can apply different animation styles in your text prompt just by typing that out. So I can say, in a claymation style and click generate. What I would love to see is being able to have video to video model where you can upload an existing video that you have acting out a certain action and then you can apply a style to that. I know that Runway has something like that. And that's the tool that I use to create an AI music video where I pulled in existing videos as like a video storyboard and I applied a comic book style to it to produce a really cool music video. But right now with the way that this works, I wouldn't be able to do that workflow. Also last fall, I experimented with Adobe Firefly and making a moving storyboard for a tennis ball commercial where everything in the world was tennis balls. And that's something that's it's hard to film. So using Firefly to generate really creative shots like I did in this video, something you should go check out. All right, let's play this. All right. <laughs> he scratches his head with the banana. So it just disappears but it got the movement right. The text to video, I'm not sure I would use it other than having fun right now and trying new things out. But one thing that Firefly does actually pretty well is text animation. And what I like to use to help build my prompts for the text animation is ChatGPT because you can actually have up to, I believe, 188 characters. So you can really get descriptive in what you want. So I wrote in here, create a 180 word detailed text prompt describing a logo reveal animation of a cursive neon sign that spells jump on in. The logo reveal should slowly zoom in over time and the lighting should be purple. That's kind of what I imagined I would write inside of Adobe Firefly, but I want it to be more detailed. So let's go ahead and upload this. It wrote out this, a dark moody backdrop sets the stage resembling a rainy evening with mist in the air. The camera begins far away, capturing the faint outline of an old dimly lit alleyway. In the center, the neon sign spelling jump on in, rest on a brick wall. It's pretty crazy that it just came up with all this detail, but this is great because it shows you what type of visual detail you can write out and you can edit this and make changes to it. And it's just a starting point. So if I'm going to copy this text prompt and put it here inside of the text prompt field, and now let's go ahead and generate. So right now our team and I primarily use text animations from our awesome Gal Toolkit extension and a Occasionally we'll use a more complex animation from let's say Envato. If we cannot find what we're looking for there, we may now move to Adobe Firefly to generate some cool titles to then use in our edits. It's a new alternative to play around with. Again, it's a hit or a miss, but some of the things are pretty awesome. And by the way, Adobe is not sponsoring this in any shape or form. I'm just excited to try new tools and that's exactly what we're doing right now. All right, so here's the result. It's cool, but it doesn't say jump. It says jump with an N. But I like the lightning around it and the reflection and the smoke. Let's jump on in. But in a separate tab, I did do a couple more and it did spell it right the first time. There's this one with jump on in and this one is spelled correctly. And then this one here, jump on in with the sparks. It kind of looks like fireworks. It doesn't really look like sparks, but the spelling is correct. So what we've done so far is just text straight to video. 
no image reference. Now let's talk about that and some of the things that we would like to see. But by the way, I'm Kelsey and I'm the creator of Premiere Gal. If you're new here, basically cover primarily video editing and post-production tips and a lot of tutorials to help you create different types of effects. If you're looking to become better at editing, I've compiled 10 tips into an ebook and it's called the video editor's checklist. Now, for those of you that don't like to read, don't worry, it's not super long. It's only 28 pages, so it has a lot of illustrations. It's really designed to be a reference guide that you can just take a look at. And the tips that I give are both theoretical and practical, and they're not platform specific. While I primarily reference screenshots from Premiere Pro, all the tips can be applied to any professional editing software that you use. So you can find a link below if you wanna go check out the video editor's checklist. And now let's see how well this first and last frames work. A bad example that I have here is of a human hand just holding a lemon. And then let's say you want it to cut the lemon and then zoom out to reveal a kitchen. So what I did is I uploaded this image as a start frame and I wrote the text prompt, a chef slices a lemon in half. The camera zooms out to reveal a beautiful wooden kitchen with large windows letting in natural light. You can see that outside there's a forest. Use a Canon EOS R with an aperture of 1.8. I also had the camera zoom out over here on the left but no shot size and no camera angle. And here's the result. So as you see, first of all, it slices the finger and it has this like glowing effect, but the zoom out follows my prompt pretty well, right? So generally having a human hand in the first frame, it just doesn't work that well. But a really good example is starting from a still image of a landscape. And let's say with this image of an igloo that I took, I want a little bear to come in from the left and walk inside the igloo. This is a good example of this. So I've uploaded this still image of the igloo and I typed in a cute baby cub bear walks in from the left of frame. He sniffs out of curiosity and then enters the igloo through the opening. Let's see the result. It's actually super cute, but then all of a sudden it turns around and changes direction at the end. I tried a different random seed that it created and I updated the prompt a little bit. Let's see this one. Instead of going in, he comes out, even though I didn't say that. I think that's the most usable one though. So while the results vary here, I think this is the best use case of just using one reference frame to then add something to it. If you wanted to add something in a particular scene, this might be the best way to do it. Another thing Firefly can do is generate atmospheric overlays. At least that's what they say it can do. So for example, let's say we wanted to add some snow overlays. We would need to generate this separately and then overlay it inside of Premiere Pro with a different blend mode. So let's type in realistic snowfall black background. And this was the result. I didn't want the snow on the ground. I really just wanted to have animation going on. This one had the camera movement on it. So I was like, okay, let's get rid of that. Let's make it static, but it still added these trees and the snowflakes are huge and it's not usable at all. So then I was like, okay, let's try a different prompt. Let's do animated falling detailed, very small snowflakes, transparent background, alpha channel. Let's try a different seed. And I still got this result of the snowflakes flying and then some random text at the end. I mean, you get the idea here. How many variations and how much can you wait to then get a result that you're not gonna use? All I did was go to Envato and went to stock video, animated snow, and look at this. I found it in just two seconds. I think right now, because there's not a lot of control, trying to generate a result that you can actually use and be usable is just taking too much time when I can just go to a stock site like this, search animating snow and bam, I have it and I can download it. But what about using a start reference image and an end reference image? Let's try it out. So I have a start image here and an end image. I uploaded these up as the first frame and the end frame. And then I just wrote a very basic prompt Golden Retriever runs happily. And by the way, when you use a start frame and an end frame, it disables the controls of the shot size and the motion. I do wish that you can control the motion slightly, but the idea is that it's going based on the framing and the shot size of these existing frames. So let's go ahead and see the result here. Yeah, 
You can see that it's pretty cool that it basically comes up with all of this motion in between, but it's still a little distorted, right? It, it's not perfect. And depending on the start frame and the end frame, it can also be kind of weird. For example, with this shot, so start and end. Look at what happens here. It runs, it looks kind of painterly, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> transforms into the sitting dog. So again, not perfect in this case. With people though, it really struggles. So this is the start frame and the end frame. And I wrote, surfer guy walks out of the ocean holding a surfboard over his head. And here's the result. I mean, it just can't do the faces, right? And I think since the beginning, Adobe has said it works best with animals and landscapes. And it's true. Also, one thing to note is that there are so many AI tools out there and Firefly is still in its infancy. I know there's other tools like Pika, Runway, Comfy AI that have a lot more control that a lot of AI artists are using right now. One reason why Adobe Firefly has taken so long is that it is a, a big company and they're making sure that all of the AI generations are commercial safe. They only train their model on Adobe stock and media that they've licensed to use. And it's not that Adobe has restricted its model to only train on media that it's licensed for and, and is commercially safe. It could be that just the model itself needs some more work before it can actually have usable uh, video outputs per se. So right now, Adobe Firefly is public for you to try out in the web app version. Eventually, the plan is to have it in Premiere Pro so you can type in a text prompt to generate a, a B-roll clip. And also they sneaked last year at object removal, which would be awesome. I know that's something that we've all been waiting for and would love to hear your thoughts on this as well. What you would like to see inside of Premiere Pro eventually as these tools develop over time. Go ahead, leave a comment below. If you want to learn how to use Firefly and other tools like it to generate VFX, you can watch this video right over here. That's all for today's video. Hope you found it useful. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.